Hi everyone, in this video, we're discussing a few projects you should do if you're in your college or you're just starting to code right now. I'll be sharing a list of projects that I've written myself and open sourced in the past six years. I've also made detailed videos around some of these projects and I'll link all of this in the description down below. We'll be starting from very basic documentation projects, then we'll be going to front-end and back-end projects. Then we'll be doing a full-stack project, a cloud-based project, an AI project, and a Web3 project. So the list is really long and we'll be starting from the basics and making our way up. With that, let's get right into the video. So the very first kind of project I would suggest that you make is a simple readme. That's all you need to make. The purpose here is to understand how you can make your first contribution or push your code to GitHub. So it could look as simple as this. This is a list of compiled algorithmic resources that I wrote back in college. As you can see, it has a list of binary search problems, dynamic programming problems, so on and so forth. And this actually got pretty viral back in the day. Just day before yesterday, I open sourced another project which contains a list of good first issues if you're trying to contribute to Google Summer of Code this year. This is extremely important if you're applying in GSOC this year. I basically went through all the organizations that came last year and filtered out good first issues that I think you'll be able to solve. So try to go through this list and solve some problems if you can. I will also be releasing a video very soon when I will try to contribute to some of these organizations from the list that I've provided. So do check this out. So the purpose of writing such projects is to get familiar with Git, GitHub and open source contributions without diving too deep into code. The only thing you need to know here is Markdown and I'll link a few resources to that in the description. Moving on, the next project I made was a blog of my own. The blog looks something like this. This was made back in the day, so this is not updated at all. But if you go to my GSOC blog section, you can see a bunch of blogs that I have written. And the important thing to note here is this is a static website. And what that means is this website does not have any backend. It's very simple to write. In fact, if you go to the code here, each of these posts that you see here is actually a markdown file in the project. So if I have to add another post, it's as easy as adding a new file here. I've used this framework that was very popular back in the day called Jekyll that would help you create similar websites or like blogging static websites, which was a one-time effort of setting up this boilerplate code. And then you could just add more and more posts to it, just like I showed you. And in the description, I leave how you can create your first Jekyll project. And the good thing is if the repository that you deploy this project to looks something like this, in my case, it's hkirath.github.io because my username at GitHub is hkirath. In your case, it will be your username github.io. If you do that, it'll automatically get hosted on your username.github.io. You don't have to write a CI CD pipeline for this. It'll automatically deploy it. And you can also add your own domain name here, something like hakiratsing.com. I leave that as an exercise for you to do yourself. The next thing I'd suggest you write is a simple full stack application. A full stack application is basically any other website that you see, a website which has some dynamic content to it. What I mean by that is you're able to sign up, create an account, and then do some things on the website. In my particular case, I wrote this note taker website. This was actually an assignment for a job that I was applying for. And you'll see, I tried to complete as many features as I could. And the ones I could not, I left them as a to-do in the readme. I also wrote the instructions to set up the project locally in case the interviewer wanted to do that. And you can follow the same if you want to set up this project locally. Although what I would suggest is that you create an application of your own. A note taking application in my case is basically an application where people can go, create and maintain a bunch of notes and share them with their friends. Okay. We will be back after a short commercial break. Someone is getting married. Let me check this out. So it's 6 a.m. Uh, it's like 5.30. And right next to my house is this marriage palace. And someone is getting married tonight. Okay, moving on. Uh, you can check this project out. I think I wrote it in a pretty clean fashion considering this was an interview request. And if not, feel free to contribute to it, open a PR and I'll be more than happy to merge it. Moving on, the next thing we're building is a game. Now there are a few ways of writing a game. Some of them are more complicated. If you like doing 3D stuff, then you might have to use something like Unreal. But what we are doing here is writing a simple game in JavaScript. What I wrote back in the day was Flappy Bird. The game looks something like this. You can use your arrow keys to go up and down and the 
goal of the game is simple you have to reach as far as you can and and if you ever hit a wall the game resets if you look at the code this is around seven years ago this was probably one of my first coding projects that i did myself so the code is really bad uh, i'll probably make a video where i clean this up it's just one very long javascript file but try to go through it and understand how i made it or if you can write it yourself that's even better but as you can see it's not a lot of code it's a simple html file and a javascript file that contains most of the logic and if this feels a little too complicated because there's some physics involved what you can do is make a simple game where there are two characters that sort of i don't know collide with each other as as long as you have some player movement there it's a good start to understand how games javascript canvas work all together and how you can create a game that runs entirely inside the browser with that let's move to an extension of this game the field we're working with now is ai the project is called flappy bird ai so in the last project i had to use my arrow keys to sort of navigate through the towers but now and as you can see this is four years ago so this is three years after i wrote the original project i forked that project and wrote an ai that would basically try to understand what's happening and navigate through the towers itself so it looks something like this it was using something called as generative algorithms i think there are better ways of, of solving this now but what's happening here is i throw a bunch of these angry birds and they randomly choose a path and then eventually they learn which path sort of got them the furthest and then tweak their parameters and get better and better over generations so right now they're they're at the third generation and they've reached as far as 9 10 11 wow this one's going really far whoa 15 or like 16 towers which is great i actually made a detailed video around how i wrote this and what algorithm this is using this was again four years ago i will link that in the description and this is a decent way to start although i think things have changed a lot so you should probably check what is the right way of writing an ai for a game like this these days but this was super fun the next project is a cloud-based project now i'm not showing my code here because it's really bad i just went through this but what's happening here is i've written the kubernetes pipelines for deploy my website that I had back in the day called CatCare onto a Kubernetes cluster. Again, today there are tools like Terraform uh, where you can use infrastructure as code to describe how you want to deploy. But what you're effectively doing is you've written a website like the note taker website that I wrote, which has a front end and a back end, and you're deploying it to a server somewhere. The back end is deployed to a Kubernetes cluster and the front end is deployed to a CDN. And these files describe that deployment. Anytime I make a change, I need to make sure I apply these deployments so that your code basically changes in the cloud. There are other nice ways of deploying your full stack application but finally when you join the industry you'll be using some sort of a devops pipeline to deploy your code and it's usually good to know how that's happening i am not the best guy to get advice on this because this is the only time i wrote a kubernetes deployment but there are smarter folks who understand this better i'll link them in the description finally and this is the one i'm most excited about is writing your own web3 project most probably when you're working in web3 you're writing some smart contract or some program i have a repository where i've open sourced a bunch of contracts that i wrote and i also have a playlist where I teach each and every contract that's happening here. These are on the Solana blockchain. What's more popular these days is the Ethereum blockchain. So if you want to try and understand how programs are written on Solana, you can check out this series and all the code is open source. You can check that out as well. If you want to try some other blockchain like Ethereum, I'll link in the description a few open source contracts that you can look at. Basically what you're doing here is writing a bunch of code that will run not only on your machine, but actually on the blockchain. It's a pretty vast topic. So I'd highly suggest you go through the series if you really want to understand it. It'll be a little hard to understand this code directly if you're trying to because every blockchain is different and this usually isn't how you deploy projects if you're doing a full stack project. So I am personally most excited about this one, but probably go in phases, start from project one and then end up here. So yeah, we've reached the end of the video. This video will have a lot of links in the description. If you're watching this video and if you've watched this till the end, I would highly appreciate if you actually start coding now. Go to the links in the description, understand Git and GitHub, make your first static website, then make a dynamic website deploy it, make a game, make a game AI, write some Web3 contracts, and I hope you crack that job that you're looking for. With that, let's end the video and I'll see you in the next one.